did not restrict federal funding for abortion, and they demanded that the language be made tougher. And dutiful Democrats did just what the bishops ordered. That's what Bill Press said. In other words, conservative Catholic influence in the House of Representatives was so vital to Nancy Pelosi that she knew ultimately that she had to have the bishop's support. She needed 218 votes. Considering the bill lacked 19 votes up to that time, it is astonishing that the bill narrowly passed, suggesting the arm twisting was intense. The final count was 220 in favor of the bill, just two votes to spare. It also suggests that those 21 votes were holding up the voting of, in favor of the demands of the Catholic Church. Obviously, the Catholic bishops convinced Pelosi and certain other Democratic leaders that they would lose the whole health care reform bill if they didn't make the abortion changes. Bill Press continued, in doing so, they might just as well have tossed out the First Amendment and its separation of church and state. Civil liberty advocates should be equally angry over such a blatant, blatant violation of the Constitution. In effect, members of Congress gave Catholic bishops a veto over federal legislation, power that no other group of religious leaders should hold over a secular, popularly elected Congress. Who elected the bishops anyway? he said. And whom do they represent? You see, they represent Rome. You see, my friends, the stones are crying out. God's church is almost silent, and the stones are crying out. Mr. Press is actually a Catholic. He's on, but he's on the other side of the abortion question than the bishops, obviously. Um, and even though many of God's people would agree with the bishop's concerns, students of prophecy should not miss the importance of what actually happened. The prophet Daniel mentions in chapter 7, verse 7, After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth, and it devoured and broke in, or break in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it. I'm telling you, the bishops broke in pieces the democratic agenda. Bill Press made another interesting point. Why is there special treatment for Catholic bishops? He asked. Can you imagine the complaints from Democrats if religious conservatives, James Dobson and Pat Robertson, had been given the same access? Or the howls of outrage from conservatives if Congress first took time out to ask Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson for their blessing? Not to mention the universal uproar there would be were a group of Muslim clerics consulted before the vote. No other group of religious leaders would have been given that special access to the corridors of power except the Roman Catholic bishops. While any American Catholic, even a bishop, has the right to speak out on political matters in America as an individual, it is another thing, however, for the bishops to lobby Congress as a religious entity or church and then go on a full throttle campaign to pressure Congress through the Catholic church members. It's a violation of the intent of the First Amendment of separation of church and state in the Constitution, if not of the Constitution itself. The reason that the bishops have such powerful influence is because of the dual nature of the Catholic Church. No other church has the kind of power that Rome has because they're not a mixture of church and state. The Bible tells us in Revelation 17 that this entity is both a beast and a woman. The woman rides on the beast, you see. There are other nations that mix religion and politics, but none of them have global clout that Rome has. In other words, the nation's laws, United States laws, are being influenced and manipulated by the powerful, influential church that is doing so without paying taxes. This is illegal in the United States. In essence, the Vatican actually passed judgment on civil legislation in the United States Congress before the vote was taken. In effect, delivered Catholic votes for it once the demands were met. The outcome of the legislation in the House 
demonstrates that while the Republicans don't have the votes to stop proposed legislation, the Vatican has the power to get it passed in harmony with its own agenda. The Catholic Church, a foreign nation, is now in a position to judge at least some of America's laws. Did you get what I said? The Catholic Church, a foreign nation, is now in a position to judge at least some of America's laws. This should not go unnoticed by students of prophecy. When the Catholic Church has the power to successfully pressure U.S. House of Representatives against their own majority, we have come to an unprecedented moment in history. It makes you wonder how long it will be until Rome will reach critical mass so that any law that impinges on her principles will ultimately be engineered or fixed by the Catholic bishops. More dangerously, how long will it be until Rome is capable of getting laws initiated and passed that restrict God's last generation of Sabbath keepers, such as Sunday laws? While you and I may agree with Rome's position concerning abortion, this process in Congress to politically pressure legislative representatives to do her will, even though the vast majority disagree with Rome concerning abortion, is extremely significant, brothers and sisters. There were enough conservative Democrats, mostly Catholic, who oppose abortion and would not favor the legislation unmodified so that the liberal and most powerful Democrats had to forego one of their key principles to bring the conservatives over to support the health care bill. The fact the bill passed by only two votes tells us that Rome has enough power to influence the outcome if, one of Rome's key, if it's one of Rome's key principles, even when there's a wide margin of votes against her. It also tells us that Rome doesn't yet have full throttle power, thank God, in the house unless it is more united against her positions but she will and she is well on her way to achieving it not long ago the republicans held power in congress democrats were very weak for most of the years between the reagan administration and the present you remember democrats had to get more conservative democrats elected into congressional office otherwise they wouldn't ever regain the power or it wouldn't be likely anyway. The bishop's success, wrote the Wall Street Journal, served as a reminder that Democrats' strategy over the past two election cycles of recruiting more conservative candidates to run in competitive House and Senate seats can have an unwelcome policy consequences for liberals among the party's base. About 40 House Democrats oppose the abortion rights bill. Sorry, the abortion funding bill. So, do you see what happened? Once there were enough conservative Democrats in Congress that were opposed to abortion, the Catholic Church could then use them to manipulate Congress. See, until they had those 40 more or less Democrats, conservative Democrats, the Catholic Church didn't have that power. Now it has the power because these Democrats have gotten into office over a period of time. So this is a very dangerous situation, friends. If there's a push for a Sunday law, you can be sure Rome will manipulate Congress to do so. And they'll probably get it because most of Congress is Sunday keeping anyway. The U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, continued the Associated Press, derives its power in a large part from the sheer number of Catholics in this country. It's really grown a lot. Kathy Siley, a spokesperson for the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, 